Bible, and it goes like this, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And the reason I'm reading this verse is because of what's going on in the world today, these people that are across the street, the reason they're here is because they have an interest in something called freedom. And we're not getting involved in politics today, but the reason we are here is because we are interested in freedom. The Lord Jesus, when he said these words, he was very interested that the people of this world could understand that they could be free. Now the reason, the, the people that are across the street, the reason they're here is for freedom on this earth. Maybe the 60 or 70 years that they'll be alive on this earth, that's what they are taking up. They are taking up the importance of freedom for maybe 70 years, maybe less than that of years of enjoyment on this earth. But the Bible talks about something that is far more important. The Bible talks about freedom for eternity. Now you can weigh it up. I think in your heart you would come to the same conclusion that freedom for all of eternity is more important than freedom for a few years on this earth. And the reason the Lord Jesus Christ talked about freedom was because there are many people in this world that now, the state that they are in, they are in a state that they are not free. They're, they're trapped in their sins. They're not free from their sins. And the Lord Jesus was facing that. But he was also facing something more. He was facing an eternal freedom. He was facing the fact that if people die in their sins, and if people die in their sins with sins that aren't forgiven, they, they're not saved by God's grace. And therefore, when they leave this earth, they go to a place of judgment for the sins that they decided to enjoy and the sins that they decided to keep. The sins that they decided not to turn from. They decided to enjoy that. Therefore, there is judgment for it. And that place of judgment is a place called hell. It's a very sad, solemn place, but it's a real place. And that is a place where freedom is absent. That is the place where the soul is bound up. You read of chains in that horrible place. And the Lord Jesus Christ went to such lengths. He went to, he paid such a great price so that souls from the beginning of time to 2020, so that souls could be free from sin. It is a massive interest to the heart of God that individuals could have peace, and could have rest, and could have freedom from their sin. The words of the Lord Jesus go like this, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And you know when Adam sinned, the first man that was ever made by God, when Adam sinned in the garden, he was a representative of all men. He displayed that if I was in his stead, I would have sinned just the same. I'm a fallen creature. I'm a sinner, and so are you. That's what the Bible says in Romans 3 and 23. It says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have sinned. No one's different. No one's more righteous than the next person. You can have someone in government. You can have a homeless man on the street. We are all equally lost in our sins if we refuse God's gift of salvation. And when the Lord Jesus said this, these words, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. When he was saying these words, he wanted people to realize the one way of salvation. If you look to the chart, you can look to John 10 and verse 9. And if you look to that verse, if you have a Bible up at home, you can look at it online if you want. The Lord Jesus said these words. He said, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. The Lord Jesus is very interested in your personal freedom. And it's not about this earth. It's not about the evil that may exist in this world. Hey, fuck all you said, eh? No. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I have sinned all throughout my life. 
If it was up to my good works, I promise you, on the authority of the Word of God, I'd be in hell because I cannot save myself. The Lord Jesus said the words, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Why shall he be saved? Why can people be saved? What merit do they have? What righteousness do they have? They have none. It is all through the person of Christ. When a sinner realizes their state, realizes their position in sins, being lost, being in a state where they cannot help themselves, the words of Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 8 and 9, it says, For by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves. This is talking about salvation. It's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. No one's going to be in heaven because they did a work. Everyone's going to be in heaven because the Son makes sinners free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Every single individual that will inhabit heaven for all of eternity will be there because the Son of God took all the sins that enslaved mankind. And He wasn't a slave to sin. The Lord Jesus Christ had a choice. He could remain in heaven free from sin. Or He could come to this earth and be rejected. Be rejected by sinners and could suffer the wrath of God. Suffer the wrath of God for sins He didn't commit. Do you understand that? Do you understand the fact that you're a sinner and that you cannot help yourself, but that the Lord Jesus Christ came down to this earth so that sinners could be saved, so that sinners could have peace? Isn't that a wonderful message? I'm wondering if in your heart have you received the gift of God? Because I tell you, the, the Lord Jesus and God, he, He's given the gift so that it can be received. He's paid such a great price for it. He's gone through so much effort, such a great cost, so that this gift could be given. He wants you to receive it. The Lord Jesus said the words, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Can you imagine that? Freedom from sin for all of eternity. Freedom from the judgment of hell. How can this freedom be received? How can we get freedom? The Lord Jesus Christ says that freedom, the great price that was paid, freedom can just be obtained through one thing. One thing, that one thing is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The words of Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, it goes like this. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I tell you on the authority of the Word of God again from the from the Word of God, the Word of God that God has given to mankind so that we can come to Him, so that we can get to know Him. The Word of God says that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And when people come to Christ, when people put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, God is ready and waiting to receive them. God is waiting for you. He knows your name. He knows your life. He knows the sins that you've committed. But His love goes far beyond that. And He is just waiting, longing, so that you can be saved. God is longing so that you can be free from sin for that all of eternity so you can have peace, so that you can go to bed at night and know with 100% assurance that if I was to die today, I'd be with God in heaven, free from all my sin. That's a wonderful thing. And I'll read the verse again. If you would just come to Christ and accept the gift of God, He'd save you. The words of John's Gospel, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. 